Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. This time out, we're checking out a virtual plug-in version of a super popular pedal. Let's get started. Today, we're looking at the Strymon Big Sky plug-in. Now, the Big Sky has been around for a while and it's super popular with guitar players, keyboard players, other instrumentalists because it provides such a wide range of great reverb sounds. And of course, you can use that in the studio as well, but interfacing a pedal, not quite as convenient as using a plug-in. And that's where this new plug-in, the Big Sky plug-in from Strymon comes in. Now, just because the Big Sky comes from a pedal format doesn't mean that it's only for guitar players or keyboard players or instrumentalists playing on stage. The Big Sky reverbs are applicable to any source you want to run through them, drums, vocals. It's great for creating textures, all kinds of different sounds here. Let's take a tour and check out what it can do for us in the studio. So what we have with the Big Sky plugin is 12 different algorithms. They call them machines, actually, is what they refer to them as, and we'll be going through those in just a little bit. The plugin is organized into several different sections. Across the top, we have sort of the general control functions. So we have the input control. We have the output level control. Here's where we access our presets. You can either step through those using the arrows, or you can call them up from the menu as well. We can save presets, we can copy presets and paste them into another instance, and so on. We have a bypass control for the effect. We also have a size control. This determines the size of the actual window of Big Sky from 50% to 150%. Here on the upper right is the show hide control, and this determines whether you see the actual parameter values when you're adjusting them or all the time as they are now. So this first setting, where we're in right now, you can always see the parameter values for each of the controls. If we click once, we hide the parameter values so you can't see those at all, even when you change the controls. If we click again, where it's just grayed out, you'll momentarily be able to see the controls values as you're adjusting them, and then they'll drop back out when you're no longer adjusting that parameter. These larger controls here are what they refer to as the common parameters, and these are things you're going to find on all of the different algorithms. So we have decay time, which is the length of the reverb, how long it takes for it to drop away to nothing. We have pre-delay, which is the time between the dry signal and when the onset of reverb occurs. We have tone, which adjusts high frequency content. Modulation, adds modulation into the reverb tail. Low end controls both the decay and the amount of low frequencies in the reverb tail. And then we have our mix control, and that ranges from completely dry to completely wet, depending on how you're using the plugin in your mixer. The lock maintains that mix setting whenever you change presets. So when the lock is off, if you have different settings for the mix control, save with each preset, it'll change along with the presets. When you lock that, the mix control is going to stay the same no matter what preset you're on. Down here in the lower right, we have the infinite and freeze switch control and the associated hold control. Now this is an important control if you want to sustain textures and either add to them or play over the top. When we're in the infinite setting, basically you're grabbing hold of that reverb tail and sustaining it, but as you continue to play sounds through the reverb, those additional sounds will be added in, so you're continuing to build on that sustained tail. Here's what it sounds like. Hold turns that effect on and off. Now, if we switch to the freeze setting, it's going to sustain the reverb tail, but then it will stop accepting more input into the reverb, if you will, so it no longer builds the reverb. Instead, it allows you to play over the top of the reverb. Here's what that sounds like. So with the free setting, it's almost like creating a pad that you can continue to play on top of. Here in the center, we have the unique or the specific parameters. Now these will change depending on what algorithm or machine you're working with. As you see when we step through the different algorithms, the settings that are here, or the parameters that are available here, will change. An important feature of the plug-in versus the pedal is that virtually everything is automatable from within your DAW. You can choose what parameters are automatable here, add remove and you can see that we have tons and tons of parameters that are associated with each of the machines and the function of the plug-in. Now the pedal does allow for complete MIDI control over everything but here in the plug-in it's all saved within your DAW session and you have very fine control over every single parameter. So let's step through the 12 different machines and algorithms and listen to some different sounds. I've got that guitar track that we were listening to earlier as well as the snare drum and we'll switch back and forth between those as we move through the different machines. 
So we'll begin with the cloud machine, and this creates big ambient sounding reverbs. So even with just that single algorithm or machine, we have a lot of different textures available. Everything from grainy sorts of tails to long, smooth tails. And then we have shaping control as well with all the controls across the top of the plugin. Our second machine is Corral. Now this one's very interesting because it's based on the vocal resonances of a choir. And you can determine those resonances using the vowel control here and the amount of resonance using this three position switch. Let's listen to this with the guitar. That reverb has so much character, you can really dial in the exact shape, the exact response that you want to really complement your original source sound. Next up we have Shimmer, which has become a very popular type of reverb for ambient type settings. Now with Shimmer, what we're doing is we're adding pitch shifted tones back into the reverb. And with Big Sky, we have two different tones we can add in, and we can adjust the range of those tones from an octave up all the way to an octave down, and then we can determine the amount that's being added in as well. So let's set this to one octave up. The second shift is two octaves up. So you can hear that octave and two octave up are being added back in and adding a real shimmer to the sound. But we could also drop this down say a minor third, let's drop that one, and let's drop this one down a perfect fifth and see what we get. That's a very different sound than what we expect from a traditional shimmer reverb. There's so much flexibility here for adding texture in, and again, you can control all that using automation. We also have control over how the effect's being applied using the mode switch, using the input to drive things, regenerating the effect, or a combination of the two. Technically, our next machine, which is called Magneto, isn't really a reverb, it's actually a multi-head delay effect. So we hear these multiple delays being sort of blended together to create the effect of a reverb tail, but it's different than a traditional reverb. It's almost more like hearing a wash of echoes. Here's what it sounds like. By changing the number of heads, we can affect the number of echoes that are being meshed together. And with spacing, we can determine whether the spacing between those heads is even or uneven, which gives us different rhythmic effects. Diffusion determines the density of the overall effect. Next up, we have nonlinear. Now, this is sort of an artificial reverb. It's not going to be based on any natural spaces, and it allows for some unique textures. We have quite a bit of control here using the specific or unique parameters. First of all, we have six different shapes for the nonlinear reverb. 
We also have control over diffusion or the density. We have control over decay, level, mod speed. So let's listen to some of these. Let's start with the swoosh shape. So that's the sound if we're listening to a source that has a sharp attack or transient with sustain. Now let's go over to a drum sound and listen to those different types again. So once again, we have a lot of tonal and textural options there, both by choosing the shape and again, we can work the controls as well to adjust that shape to specifically the source that we're affecting. Our next reverb type is reflections. And now this is gonna be the type of reverb you'd hear in a small space where what you're really hearing are early reflections coming off the wall, not so much the reverb tail. Here's what that sounds like with the snare drum. Now the fun thing here is we can control the shape of the room, so let's listen to the three different room shapes that are available. So that changes the character of what we're hearing. We can also adjust the position of the source in the room. That's the green dot here in this display, and we can move this around. You'll see the XY parameter change determining the position that we're in. So let's set this. We'll go back to rectangle and we'll move that around so you can hear the difference. So that's a very flexible machine for creating exactly the ambience you want around your source. And speaking of ambience, our next machine is Room, and this is going to create a realistic recreation of a particular room ranging from a studio to a larger sized room. Diffusion again determines sort of the density of that reverb effect. So we'll switch between club and studio. So two very different characters there that again, provide a realistic ambience around your source. And we can freeze that, we could do the infinite hold with it, and we can adjust it with all our common parameters as well. Now let's move over to a traditional hall effect. I really like the mid EQ control on this particular machine. It almost lets you set the type of room you're in, whether it has hard surfaces, soft surfaces, so you can adjust that to get exactly the sound you want in your hall. Our next reverb machine is a traditional plate reverb. And in this case, we have control over the size of the reverb, either a large or a small. And in some cases, you're also gonna to wanna to work with this low end control. A lot of times you'll bring the low end down on a plate reverb so it doesn't have a real rumbly wash on the bottom end to clear the sound up a little bit. So let's listen to what this sounds like. We'll start with the large plate.
two very different sounds there, and then by adjusting that low end, we can tailor things even more specifically to what we want. Our next reverb is spring. Now this is very interesting because you think of a spring reverb as what's found in an amplifier, and that's certainly the case here. But this is specifically recreated after the style of a tube-driven spring reverb, and we have control over the amount of gain that's being applied to that tube. So let's start here on clean. We we'll begin with one spring. We can determine one, two, or three, and that's going to determine sort of the thickness and the, the amount of resonance that's in the effect. And then we'll jump through the different dwell settings as well. So it's much more control than you might expect over the traditional spring reverb effect. Our next reverb machine is Swell, which is a reverse reverb effect. Now this works well blended with the dry signal, but it also works well 100% wet. Let's listen to it both ways. We have control over the rise time with this effect, so we can determine how long it takes for the reverb to swell in. Let's set this low. The swell machine is great for those ethereal type of effects, whether you're mixing it behind the dry signal or letting it swell out on its own. Our final machine is Bloom, and this one is basically a big ambient space, but it has multiple levels of diffusion, so it's sort of constantly growing or blooming, as they say. The reverb sort of swells into effect. Let's listen to what happens with this. Let's listen to that with the snare drum as well. That's one of those reverb effects that adds a lot of texture to your mixes. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Big Sky Reverb plugin from Strymon. It's a super accurate recreation of the pedal effect, but inside your DAW, it allows for even more flexibility, more versatility, and even more creative options. You're going to want to add this one to your toolkit because it's so usable on all types of sounds and in all types of mixes. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at Sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.